Hi everybody, welcome back to Girl Talk with Isi. And so for today, I am speaking to Chioma, a fashion designer here in Abuja. Chioma, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so the first time I met Chioma was, at, I think, four to five years back. First through Mentally Aware Organization, and then through She Leads Africa. She was hosting one of the events. <laughs> And then yeah. I got to know her through her Instagram page. Like, you know, she's very fashionable. She looks great. And I was just like very mm. impressed. Then she was just a fashion blogger, but she was doing amazing things with her brand. And fast forward now, she has a shop. <laughs> she has a whole shop. She has people who work for her. Like she's creating designs for people in Abuja and abroad. And I mean, it's just been a few years and I think she's doing amazing. So I would just love Thank to speak you. to her about her entrepreneurship journey so far and just to encourage other people on the paths in entrepreneurship especially those who are trying to get into the fashion business that it's possible and there's somebody here doing it <laughs> <laughs> yes so if you could just first um let us know how you started um how did you even get the idea to have like maka essay like even what inspired you to have this okay so right from Rather, my name, look, name just, my name is Chama Ize yeah. and the creative director for Maka Eze. Um, I've always loved fashion. So fashion mm -hmm. has always been something that I loved from when I was small, I used to draw. Okay. And I used to draw outfits. Then my parents were like, no, draw skeleton because they wanted me <laughs> to be a doctor. And somehow I found myself doing public health in school. Wow. But while in school, I won most fashionable in 100 level, 200 level, 300 level. Wow. So I just found myself just loving it i didn't yeah. know why i didn't know how but i was just intrigued with it with colors with designs anytime i see anybody pass i'll just be looking at the outfits i always stare at people's outfits and sometimes <laughs> they think i'm staring at them <laughs> but i'm just looking at their outfits yeah. then uh, fast forward to 2016 mm. when i graduated from school okay i really wanted to work in it so my plan for life was working an ngo for 10 years make money start a fashion business but I was done with school and there was no job forthcoming mm -hmm. and I started to learn how to sew. Okay. So the guy that used to sew my clothes before, I just told him that, oh, I want to learn how to sew. I went to meet him. We had a little bit of issue here and there. So I left and I started learning how to sew my own. Thank God for <laughs> YouTube because I started learning with people that post like DIYs on YouTube. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. that was in 2019. No, no, that was 2018. 2018 into 2019. Yeah. Then 2019, I got my first sewing machine in 2019, around April. Then I started sewing from my house. Wow. Then I started with, because I started sewing with, um, I had 64 kids that I saved from NYC. That's because okay. I blew up all the money. <laughs> so what was left was 64,000 naira. So I just bought fabrics here and there's just small, small fabrics to just you know, get my hands strong. Yeah. Then I started with um, making clothes every day for myself to church hmm. because church was like the only place I would always go out to. So I always yeah. made sure that I wore something new to church every yeah. time. And you had that Instagram post. You always yes, does, like fashion. fashion, for fashion. <laughs> yes. So I always made yeah. sure I wore something new to church. Yeah. Um, and this is about um, business that I think everybody should know. Yeah, your first marketer. Hmm. You have to be your first marketer, your first promoter, your first accountant your yeah your first everything yeah. so i was my first marketer so i had to be in people's faces with what i wore yeah. so people would always see me after church tell me you're always taking pictures i'll say it's my clothes yeah. i made it so i have to take pictures with it hmm. then um when i said taking small small orders from two to three others i started getting like five others and i wow. one thing i didn't want to do with the brand was to um, delay people's clothes because I know yeah. people had problems with tailors that do not deliver. I didn't, I didn't yeah. want to be that person. That's the common complaint in Nigeria, <laughs> unreliable yes. tailors. Yeah. So I didn't want to do that. Then um, I was not thinking if I was going to get a shop, I don't have a name. Hmm. People just know that, okay, Chama is a tailor, yeah. but I do not have a name. And this was where it happened. I was just like, if I say I'm someone is wearing chama it doesn't sound fine in the ear <laughs> i was thinking of a name that people would it will stick yeah. and people just like ah that's my guy is it oh or that's so and so or that's my attack or that's yeah. it will just stick and i just told god that i really needed a name for the business because i really wanted to launch it in 2019 on my birthday okay and on the 5th of december or 4th of december i slept and i literally saw just the way it is with yeah. the logo and the name i saw it like that on a plaza board and I just woke up and I just drew wow. the logo and I wrote it and I slept back. Then I found someone that was going to, I said, this design, don't change it, don't do anything, just put it inside laptop oh, and bring it outside okay. for me. Wow. And that's how the name came about. So it's for my middle name, Wamaka, and my surname, Izzy. And the meaning of it is royal beauty because Maka means mm. beautiful. 
then Eze is a royalty. So, mm -hmm. so it just it just means royal beauty. So in my head, I just wanted everybody to wear affordable clothing and still feel like themselves. Yeah. The hashtag I started with was I wear me, like Maka okay. is it. So you are wearing yourself, you are wearing what you love, you are wearing what you are comfortable in. You are not uncomfortable in the outfits. Like yeah. you can wear the outfit to church, to outing with friends, anywhere and you are just yeah. comfortable with it. And you can move freely and in you those can outfits. Move, yeah. And you can move freely with it. And that's yeah. how we started. And um, wow. That's how Bakaizi was born, actually. Uh -uh. That's amazing. You just had a dream and then you woke that, up and then... Literally. Like, God just gave how, you that. Yeah. And 7th of December 2019, we officially launched. Wow. And how has it been so far, like, on building a business, profiting off it? Because I know that the Nigerian climate is not easy, and especially fashion. Like, mm. I know a lot of people who are doing fashion, so it must be a bit competitive. So how do you sort of, like, stand out and make money? So, um... One thing I wanted to carve out for Makaize, the main thing I wanted to carve out for Makaize was we are not going to disappoint you with your outfits. Yeah. Um, we have that tailors that you call and call and call and they never pick up. Or you would come to their shop and they would disappear. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I wanted to be as transparent as possible. Yeah. I want to order so and so. Okay, this is what is available. This is not what's available. Would you want this? Would you not want this? I don't want to show what your other versus what you got. So I want mm. to be as transparent as possible. This is the price for this. This is the price for that. And I didn't want to show where your wedding is maybe Tuesday. Mm. And I will not come and give you your clothes on Wednesday. Mm. So yeah. I, I wanted to eliminate all of those exactly. things that people always complain about yeah, um, Nigerian, Nigerian tailors, tailors yeah. so with that, that that started with that's what my brand started with and sort of made me stand out so a lady mm -hmm. came not even a lady a woman came to my shop and she said that um, she used to use another tailor and the other tailor is cheaper but she prefers me because I'll deliver you see wow so she knows you my price is higher yeah, but, but I'll still deliver exactly. than going to where she'll sit down she said the wedding can be on Tuesday and you sit down on Monday night with her to be finishing the outfit. Can you imagine? So that's what I really wanted to eliminate yeah. from Makaize. Then with consistency, I is everybody once you want to think of a business to start in Nigeria, the first thing as a lady you think of is oops. Mm -hmm. First thing that you think of as a lady is um fashion. You want yeah. to just go into fashion. Whether you know how to sew, you don't know how to sew, you have business I you just the first thing without yeah. visibility study anything, you just go into it. Mm -hmm. I mean before I started um before I started my fashion brand, I looked at the friends that I had. Okay. I mean, oh, I like how you dress. Notes. <laughs> I like this. Notes. And most of the guys were like, ah, this um, outfit, my babe can wear this. I'll just be uh, noted. And I, then I, most of the people that I had, I gave them, I gave my tailor, like the guy that was sewing for me, yeah. the customers. And you I was see? like, ah, ah. Wow. You so guys are bringing something, customers to yeah. tailor. So this is something that, okay, I know that yeah. once I start, I have a small niche of people that I can just yeah. work with and with good referral. So this person refers one person, this person refers another you person. See? Because referral as a business is, is currency. Mm -hmm. Because someone said something that business is 10% transactional and 90% relationship. Okay. Because when you are able to relate with your customers, they will like, oh, this person treats me well. This person, yeah. so even if it's expensive, they will still tell another person about mm. you because you know that this tailor Sha is still accountable. Exactly. This tailor is still has my interest in mind when they are exactly. making my outfit because I'm too quick to say sorry. Mm -hmm. And so so and so, my dress I didn't like. Person I'll just say sorry, so I don't want to have yeah, any issue. It matters to be honest because there are some tailors they'll argue with you, and then you, you are getting angry. Also, <laughs> it's like it's my money. That's yep. true. The way you communicate with other people yeah. matters. Yeah. So I will just first apologize. I'm really mm. sorry. So 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 so. Then we can now move past it because yeah. by the time you say sorry, it just breaks down all the shouts they want to shout. <laughs> it breaks it it breaks it That's all true. the way down. Then That's you just true. listen to what they want to say and they're like, yeah. oh okay, I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. Yeah. So um, I think that's what has helped me to be transparent as much as possible and to mm -hmm. be accountable. Oh, this outfits I didn't like this. I'm sorry. I will make sure to do so so so. so. Then if it's yeah. something that I can maybe give an incentive, like okay, mm -hmm. your next outfit I'll give a ten percent off or I'll give a ten twenty percent off, so I can keep you because customer retention is big yeah. in business. To be able to retain your customers is a That's miracle. Is a miracle how god has kept the ones that have that has been with me over the years so i think that's also just being transparent and accountable with mm -hmm. what you're doing as a business mm -hmm. that's amazing and i also wanted to ask about being in abuja because i feel like lagos is the creative city lagos is where all things fashion are happening so do you ever see yourself moving to lagos or do you just feel as though you can get clients from lagos also is it 
is it difficult to be in Abuja and be a designer or it doesn't really matter because people still wear clothes? <laughs> Thank you, people <laughs> still wear clothes. That, yeah. I think that's, that's it. Okay. Because um, Lagos is, is choking. The competition okay. is high. Wow. The good thing about Lagos is that you definitely will always find clients because Lagos people, they like, in quotes, dirty December. They <laughs> like summer. They like yeah. Valentine. They like anything that will make them dress up and go out. Abuja yeah. people are more reserved. They just want to just wear something simple, just hang out with like friends, nothing yeah. too out there. But you see Lagos people, they want, <laughs> they can order like 10 clothes for 10 different outings. Wow. But Abuja people, because everywhere is sort of clothes, they just wear one cloth and go everywhere. Yeah. So the thing about Abuja is that once you have your market, mm -hmm. you will not necessarily need to go to another place. Okay. Right, so okay. what I try to do is let me conquer Abuja first because okay. this is my home. Because okay. if I go to Lagos, I'll think of where to stay, I'll think of how to start getting people. Okay, it's a whole lot, but it's I have Abuja because yeah. for me, the way I started with it, as I said, I started with church, wearing clothes in church. Yeah. So I dragged people from church first, okay. then people from church brought outside people. Hmm. Then I now went to school, I dragged people from school. Yeah. So from anywhere I sort of find myself, I'll drag those people. Okay, so wherever they may be for the Abuja one, it's more like you don't need to be anywhere specific to yeah. run your business. Once your business, you're carrying it everywhere. Today, mm -hmm. if I decide that I want to move to the abroad, yeah. this place will still be running, but I'll still have another branch. You but see? you have one home base, yeah. then every other place comes, sort of comes out from it. Okay. So I met someone in Abuja and I made clothes for her. She traveled abroad with the outfits. Someone liked it, mm -hmm. made for that one. And she liked it, told her brother, her brother likes it. Now the brother is getting married and I'm making for all their groomsmen and all see? their bridesmaids. And for me, when I'm making clothes for anybody abroad, I'm not collecting Naira. Yes. I don't, because my Naira is useless, sorry. <laughs> but yes. I don't collect in Naira. So uh -uh. they're going to pay me in their currency because they stay in the UK. Wow. And it's, I had to open a dumb account and a dollar account, a dollar account and a pound account for it because I'm like, if I want to be big, the way I want to be big yeah. internationally, I have to push myself to that international ground. Exactly. It might be a stretch because sometimes you might not know their measurements. Because yeah. one I sent, I didn't really know her measurement. I just said, send me your picture. Hmm. I'll work with your picture then. Because I've been making clothes over time. So I know the specifics for people's measurement, how it's supposed to look like. And when I sent it, it fits. Just that it was a little bit tight. I was like, okay, thank God I did something. I held it. So twice. Mm -hmm. So if it's too tight, just open it up. It will loosen up a bit, mm -hmm. and it was okay. So it might be a stretch in terms of like trying to push yourself out there, but Omo, just find one person first. Yeah, and see where it will person. lead you to. Right everybody's now. She's here in Abuja and <laughs> she's making you. clothes for people. And everybody's jackpiring. So you don't know if the person that you made for is the one that is jackpiring that you'll you be making see. clothes for them. Yeah, because once somebody sees that the quality of your work is good, they will still want you to continue mm -hmm. to. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. And even the aspect of the fact that you are making for the groomsmen as a woman, is it <laughs> a challenging to have like you're making for people that are men or like how do you even it's like a completely different market? You yes, know? it is. It is how um, do you sort of like maintain that? So when I started, standard. I started with making simple clothes for women. Just okay. dresses, shirts, just simple outfits. Then someone asked me, Chama, do you make suits? No, I don't say no. I say yes. <laughs> and I started looking for suits still because I didn't wow. learn suits. So I had to, I went every nook and cranny to look for a suit tailor. And then I didn't even have money to start the person's suit. So what I did was, I got a suit tailor, hmm. gave him a makeshift. Like I just gave him a random measurement to make the suit for me so I could see his finishing. Yeah. So when I saw it was good, I now told the guy, okay, how many suits do you want? He told me he wanted to, awesome. I gave it to the guy, he made the suit, gave it. Wow. Ah, this suit is nice, I need three more. You awesome. See? Collect, make. Wow. So then with one suit, came one suit, came another suit. So since I started, I think I've made wedding people suits, maybe like six, seven of them. And they're always like seven groomsmen, 10 groomsmen. Oh my God. So and you didn't even start off with thinking about making no, for men. No. But you have like Maka is a men. Men. So, so I had to launch Maka wow. is a men this year because see? guys will ask me, we, I need to go to your page. I'm like, okay, sorry, let me go and look for a page because I need to create create the page for them so they could see something that they, they would want to order because the lady would come, do you make for guys? I don't say no, I say yes. I go and look for a witch. So when I was getting my tailors, I got people that were good with male and female. So okay. I have three in-house tailors, two are awesome with female, then okay. one is stronger in men. So any men I have, I give it to him, but oh, yeah. he still does female, but he does the female casual. 
Okay. So if I have casuals, I just give it to him. Then the female, maybe yeah. breast cords, corsets, I give it to the other two. Okay. So it just sort of has a balance. I won't have to start going about to be looking for. Yeah, you know somebody. Yeah, somebody is working, working for you that's yes. actually doing that. Yeah. And how is it actually managing people, employees? Like you're the boss. <laughs> how do you yeah. handle all of that? <gasps> Managing human beings <laughs> are the, are we, is the, or are the, whichever English is correct, <laughs> stressful. Because now I have three in-house tailors that are guys. Hmm. I used to come, I used to joke with my friends, I'm like, I'm king of boys because all my tailors are guys. <laughs> even the ones that are outside. So trying to get this one to do A and this one to do B and this one to do C and they should do it well yeah. is a whole lot. So one major thing every entrepreneur has to have or everybody doing business is quality control. Because mm. you have to check it like, okay, is it okay? Is it the style they gave you? Is it exactly how the style is called? When, yeah. I, when they finish, I'm like, let me see what you need. Hold it. I check the picture, check the style, yeah. check everything. Okay, it's good. So when they now come to wear it, so sometimes it might not be what the customer wanted that they mm -hmm. made. I'm like, just leave it first. When, when she tries it and she likes it on her body, good. If she doesn't like it, we'll change it. Because yeah, sometimes a mistake can be a new style. Yeah. So I might want to make an off-shoulder dress mm -hmm. and I made um maybe a sweetheart's neck okay. and the customer comes out like oh i really like this neck and we just leave, it, just like leave it like that so because prepared. it's it's still a sort of design but not exactly what she wanted but if mm -hmm. it's something totally abstract i'm like no we have to change it and i will change it before the customer comes because my money is tied to that clothes <laughs> <You> <laughs> so see? it's most time not easy to manage them but yeah. we've sort of gotten that up of relationship that they know what i want okay and they know that if it's not this standard, they'll lose it. Right. They'll have to lose it from the beginning and we do that clothes again. And there's no conflict there, they just know how no, to... Okay. No, 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 no. So, when I was starting my business, I just told God that I don't want to have to worry myself about tailors. Hmm. Because for me, Sati Makaize was like, or it's like a, um, what's the word? A vision for my life, right? Where I know yeah. God is carrying me to. So, it cannot be casual. So, any little option or any little... Um, problem. I just go to God. God, I need help with Susan. So, so when I was getting yeah. my first set of tailors, I was like, God, just give me people that are beautiful. Mm. And He gave me the first set of tailors. They stayed with me till this year, mm. and they got their own shop. So, so when people come, wow. they're like, Ah, Tajidin and Susan. So they are still with me. I'm like, Yeah. So they are still with me. Like yeah. either you're yeah, a good madam or they are good tailors. I'm like, We are just. It's just the both of us. So when I got my tailors in 2019, yeah. it was more like I just told God that I really needed people that would stay with me throughout mm -hmm. and that would not give me problem. And yeah. we were a very small cozy family of three. Two tailors and just myself mm -hmm. and i had uh, other people outside and um, this year because they moved from 2019 so they've gone from space to space because tailors they're always hopping from one place to another yeah and when they stay with me they stayed with me the longest and by this year one told me that oh he's going to get his space he didn't know how he wanted to tell me and mm -hmm. it was a bittersweet experience for me yeah. because i was so happy but yet so sad because now i have to go and look for another person yeah. that i have to train like starting over again, yeah. you know what i want and when he got his space he told me oh the space is upstairs we went to his shop and we prayed for him it was even very emotional for me and for him do you know how when a child is getting married mm -hmm. and the parents are you know letting go of the child mm -hmm. i want you to still be at home but i still <laughs> want you to get married and move on with your life so that's mm -hmm. how it was for me and the next thing, after like maybe two, three months, the other one said the same thing that he was going to, going to get his own space. So it was a proud mommy moment, but <laughs> still a sad one. Then yeah. I got new tailors. So I got other two and other and I added one to the two that I got. And I just told them that being with me, you're not going to be here forever because yeah. that's not, I don't want you to, it means I'm not growing. Mm -hmm. If you're here with me for a long time, you, both of us are not going because we are still on that same level. Yeah. By the time you go out and I get new people, I'm training new people, yeah. I'll have to add more skills to myself to be able to train them. So I was like, Tajin and Idris, they've done their best as apprentices, as work, and they've gotten their own space. And that's my prayer for you people. Mm. So I told them that I want you to be flexible. Get your own customers outside. Mm. Find a way to enrich yourself that you have customers outside that when you are done with all of my work, Thankfully, I have lights, I have sewing machine. You can use it to work. Yeah. So you can work and get your own money. Because side money is necessary. It's, yeah. it's essential. I like that. You but I don't want you to. Also. Yeah, because I don't want you to be sewing behind my back when I come in, I come and hide it. You see? I want you to just yeah. be free. So you can get your own customers that you can be able to go out and start yeah. your own business. Because one day you have a family. Mm -hmm. And 
as a person that is in Abuja, if you're running your own business, you know how to manage your family and manage your business. So mm -hmm. work with me for a while. Get your customers at any how you want to get them. Yeah. But make sure that my clothes is done first. Yeah, exactly. Before I can do outside people's own. Then yeah. you'll grow to get to that point where you now have your own exactly. space. So you're not like holding them hostage. You no, still no, no, like no, no, if no, they no. want Please. to expand, like they should that's great. That's a, I think that's a great way to be a boss. Yeah. And I think lastly, just any advice you have for entrepreneurs, those who have a fashion business, but those who aren't really like, um, maybe they don't have enough money to really like fund it or just expand. What would the advice they do to really sort of like build and grow? What are your tips? Or to even motivate themselves? Like? First thing, pray. I don't know, I don't know any other thing. Yeah. I, when I started, I'm, I'm doing, even the cost of the business, I should tell God that give me work per week. Mm. I don't disappoint anybody. Yeah. Just give me work per week. So when I'm done with this week, let next week come give me a new work. You see. So I know that I can handle, I don't want to do more that I can take. I don't want to have to disappoint anybody because it's too rubber for me. Yeah. So, Saturday Friday will come and finish all the work for the week. And then Saturday I'm not like, hey God, how will I find work? Yeah. And literally on Monday someone will just call me, oh I want to sew, I want to sew, I want to sew. And I'm just like, God, this is how you love me. I know, <laughs> you're too cute. And that's how it has yeah. been. The first thing is just to just pray because, to yeah. be honest, that's where I got my strength from. So there are some days where maybe the tailors do not do what you wanted yeah. or you don't have customers for like a week. Your brain just wants, you just want to just remove your brain and just start running around Abuja. But you, that's where I just know that, okay, I'll just go back to God. God, please, I need strength through this period. Yeah. And then secondly, have, I don't know how best to say, but you just have to be consistent. Yeah. So my mom used to say that Chuma, you don't used to repeat clothes. I'm like, I can't. Mm -hmm. I want to, but I yeah. can't because it is I have to sell the brand. I don't know how best to do it than to sew clothes. Someone tells me, Oh, I have a birthday party coming up. You see me looking for style on my phone, Pinterest, mm. fabrics, to want to give them um, the very best. To give so when I'm going styles, there, you yeah. will know that okay, oh ah, you made this outfit. Yes, I yeah. want this. Beautiful. And we all want a tailor that's actually looking into something that's fashionable, modern, trending, just yep. like not that they, they stick to just one, one particular thing. style. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to just be cons you have to just be consistent every yeah. single time. It might be hard to show mm -hmm. because there's some days that I'll come to the shop. We don't really have anything to do per se. I'll just start looking for fabrics, old fabrics that I will just give them to sew something for me, just to keep them busy. And so I can just wear them, maybe just take pictures. So you have yeah. to be consistent and you have to show. There's no off day. Okay. Monday to Sunday, you just have to shop Sunday self. so when I sleep on Sunday after I go to church come back and sleep I start looking for styles okay what style can I make um, what is going on now with other fashion designers what are they making that people are buying yeah. what well, how can I tweak it to be my own style so mm -hmm. Monday to Sunday yeah what when, when people say they want to leave nine to five to run a business when a business is two for seven there is no of the I, yeah, I wake up in the night and I start looking for okay how do I market to men so that they can market to their wives, so they can market to their children. So you your see, brain yeah. is working every blessed time. There's no off day. Wow. Then thirdly, I would say it's it's hard when people say it. I mean, when people leave it, but it's, everybody says it. Just don't give up. Mm, yeah. You might take a break because I know at some point that there, there are some things I need to do in my life that I want to push myself to the international level. That yeah. I might take a break. For a while here yeah. but the market is not going off we are just taking a break to rebrand but you are not giving it up i'm mm. just do not give up it's hard when people say do not give up i'm like oh sure yeah it's, it's easy to say with my boy it's really hard to live up to it because that some days you just want to just be a baby girl <laughs> just look for one um runs that you just want to just do to be honest and just be like i'm not doing this anymore but yeah. do not give up on it because I, there's this part of the Bible that keeps me going. See a man that is diligent in his work, he will sit before kings and not before men. men. Mm. There are some people that have made clothes for that. In my widest dream, I, I didn't even think I would make clothes for such people. Yeah. And I go to church and my pastor knows me as Makaizi. Mm. And I go somewhere and the first, when people call me Makaizi, I know that this one, they don't know me personally, they know me from my work. Can you imagine? That's amazing. Mm. For somebody so, to know you know, from your work. work. So that it shows that your work was well, already speaking yeah. for itself. So just wow. be diligent in it and just do not give up. You get yeah. to that point where there's no overnight success. Yeah. Overnight success is the backyard two years, three years, four yeah. years. Longer but, sometimes actually. And by the time I get to that point where I'm maybe making clothes for, let me think of the best person I want to make, maybe Michelle Obama. So I'm like, ah, where did she come from? Ah, she overnight success. But they will not see that I was doing all of this in the Abuja you and see. I got myself to the international level so just be yeah. diligent in your work just do not give up 
um, in terms of money, honestly, you might not have money to start. Mm -hmm. But what I did was that I had friends and family. So when I, that time I wanted to make the suit, the yeah. guy did not pay me. So mm -hmm. I called my sister to borrow me 30k to run the suit. Okay. But the fabric made the suit. So when he paid me, I used it to make his next three suits. Mm -hmm. So by the time I made his next three suits, at least I had gotten profit from the two and from the three. I paid my sister back. The money was enough to run other things here and there. So you might not have money, but to be honest, when people say they don't have money to start, you have a little bit of, you have friends and family. Yeah, even if it's 10K, even if it's 20K, yeah. just collect it from them. Make something and sell it. Yeah. When you make it, oh, I like this, make the second one to sell mm -hmm. it. You get the money from it. By the time, there's this part that tiny foxes, some, some, um, something, 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 like tiny foxes, something, something, I can't remember it is in the Bible, or tiny drops of water makes an ocean. Mm. You take 5k, take your profit here, 2k, 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 at the end of the day, yeah. you see you've gathered 50,000. Mm. Yeah. You see you've gathered 100,000, you see, and don't eat your, don't eat your, your, there's bread and there's seed. Yeah. So I get 50k um, profits. I have the one that okay I want to use to maybe expand the business. Then I have the one I want to use to buy permanent things, roll on, okay, all of those yeah. things. Do not eat your seeds. So I say people as soon as they yeah, just you get, know how to manage your money. As soon as you just get the profit, immediate gratification. You want to buy hair, you want to buy phone, you want to buy this. I used yeah. when I started I used I was using an iPhone seven plus. Everybody around me had changed to so iPhone eleven, iPhone twelve, iPhone. Mm. I said, oh, when the time come, I'll change the phone. I don't know Just when. manage what we are managing. I don't know where. I don't need to compete with anybody. So there's that thing where you want to compete. You want to hold this phone. You want to yeah, so be in the latest space. I just space. got to 12. I just got to. I, do you get? I, I, I didn't want to stress uh, myself. So this year, I told God that I really want to change my phone this year. Okay. The first job I got this year yeah. was an international work to make bridesmaids clothes and groomsmen's outfits yeah. and when they were coming back because it was my sister's wedding when they were coming back I just told my sister don't come back with the money just buy me phone first <laughs> so I can see the phone as it's coming back yeah. so that's and this was I had to delay myself to buy this phone for I think five years I used my other phone for so there's some things that you really because iPhone 11 12 13 14 is every blessed year the phone keeps coming there's out. always something Do you yeah. want to keep <sighs> yeah you can't so you have to um, understand delayed gratification. Wow. You might not I wear like the that. nicest of hair. Like you might that. not dress wear the nicest of shoes. Yeah. It was one this year I, I started stocking up with my shoes and dresses because before I wear one shoe with all of the outfit that the only thing I know I had to change was clothes because mm. I have to market the outfit. I didn't notice so because on Instagram nobody I'm not, killing it. I didn't know nobody, nobody notices I didn't know anything. What is what you want the shoe with this other clothes? You, you really do not need yeah. so delayed gratification. Don't yeah. eat your have your bread and have your seed. Yeah, and that's, that's seed. actually a really amazing tip because sometimes I think, especially as ladies, you want to feel like you're keeping up with other people, this and that. But don't try to compete with others. No. Just do what you can. Actually, what is within your own pockets, like within your own pockets, please. Yeah. Your, you might have all the money, but to be honest, I tell myself this hair that I want to buy. Yeah. December this hair will still be there. Yeah. Next year this hair will still be there. Yes, so yeah, it, it might increase, but I tell myself that if the hair increase, I will increase also because well, someone will say that I want to the hair now, dollar goes up. I'll go up with the dollar. Yeah. Amen. So the plan is not to belittle myself because of how Naira is going on in Nigeria. It's yeah. to push myself to as it's going up, me too, I'll be going up. Yeah. Right? So see yourself advancing. Just see yourself advancing as you're going. Yeah. So referral goes a whole long way. Like it's like make an outfit that even if it's there's one part that uh, i think someone said it sweep when if you're giving to sweep a place sweep that place like it's the host of angels that are coming to come and dine in that place so when you're making one outfit make it like you're giving it to michelle obama yeah, for giving, yeah. just put all your best inside that person yeah. will say oh i like this the refer referral and that's is how you grow and expand it yeah. is the currency for any business person so first yeah. off just go to god he's he knows the and don't rush into business because you think everybody's doing it mm. find your niche just know that okay i like this thing how can i do it so in fashion there's stylists there's tailoring there's fashion designer there's costume designer there are too many things which one do you fit best yeah. that you can find yourself so me i know that vicky james type of outfits i don't want to stress myself mm. But you see, ready to wear. That's why I want to find myself. So I want to walk on the street and see everybody just wearing makazi, 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 makazi. Wow. Then to make one outfit for wedding and after exactly. the wedding, that, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't Something want to Something that somebody myself. can wear in different occasions. And that's the kind of clothes I like to wear. Like, I'll still wear this in another place. I'll wear this at work. I'll wear this going out. That's also. What, like, that is what yes. I love. That's, so yeah. just find your niche and stay. So first, go to God. Second, be consistent. Third, just do not give up. Just be diligent in the work and do not give up. Yeah. And 
every other thing will sort of patch itself. There are some things that will be hard, but every every day will patch itself to be better. Because I tell myself, if I didn't start 2019, just 2019, three mm. years. If I didn't, just three years. if I didn't start 2019, I wouldn't be here. Because when yeah. I started in my house, I was staying in my house. When I started there, I was like, I need to get a shop space. My mom said, Oh no, one thing, one thing. I said, I don't know. I didn't have customers. It was just yeah. like maybe five, six people. But I just told myself I needed to get a shop space because. There's this saying that if, if you put a shark in a small bowl, hmm. the shark can only grow to that extent because of yeah. that is the environment. So I have to say, okay, no, for me to get more people. And I stay in Lube. I don't want to have customers in Lube. Hmm. I want to have customers in town where everybody's coming from left, right, and center. Yeah. Because it's too busy for me to stay in Lube. Have, when I'm done, go to my house. It's easy, but hmm. I was like, no, I have to push myself. So whatever you are doing as an entrepreneur, just know that at some point you have to get uncomfortable. Yeah, to, be to, to be able to grow you just have to get uncomfortable yeah. then learn every day yeah. you learn concept today tomorrow learn another thing next yeah. month learn another thing don't just get stuck on just yeah expand that place. your knowledge don't just, just be somebody that is only making yep. skirts or something like that just, ex just expand your knowledge yeah. and skills and every single day will get better i think that's the best i can say every single day will get better today would be at 50 percent tomorrow will be at 51.5 yeah hold that 51.5 and be grateful for it next tomorrow will be 60. then sometime it can even drop again to 50. the major thing is that you are alive yeah you have someone that is paying for what you are doing and at the end of the day there's a time that would come that you look at yourself and you just be like now maybe this mm. it might not come immediately but the day to come you literally look at yourself and be like now maybe this yeah and I really pray and hope that you do not give up on yourself because I think that's the first thing. I know that each day will get better and that vision you have in mind for where your business wants to go to, just keep it in front of you every day and just be looking at it and one day it will definitely get there. Yeah, I don't know when. I don't know when markets will be on an international, maybe Vogue, Bitches Vogue. You're I don't know on when. on an international no. level. You're making ah. people abroad. That's international. That's it. Yeah, dear. Yeah. yeah, so... But I, see, I, I can always think of this. I want to just see it in every store. Like someone just walk into a fashion line, they see yeah. Ralph Lauren, they see Versace, they just see Mackenzie somewhere. Amen. Like, we're good. Yes. So it will definitely get there. But yeah. if I give up now, I won't see it. Yeah. Well done. I actually already look at you like <laughs> that. So when I walk in, like see her, look at how much she's done. Because when I first met you, like I said, a fashion blogger, and now this is this is hers. Yeah. Within just a few years, like. Me, I'm still trying, I'm still struggling. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> but this is working. what she has done within just a few years. To me, I feel like you're inspiring and like... Thank you. Uh, this is amazing and I feel that I hope I hope that you enjoy this interview and I hope it's inspired you on your own entrepreneurship path. And Shiyama, I feel like the sky is the limit. Like Amen. the fact that within such a short time you've been able to achieve this, I can't even imagine what you'll be able to achieve the next three to five years. I feel like... God is going to take you so Amen. far and I hope he puts you in the room with royalty because Amen. you have that. that presence, that dignity and that I've always feel that when I'm in your energy and I'm in awe, no really I'm not just saying it, I'm in awe because I think that you're an amazing woman and more blessings to follow you. Amen, 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 amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys. Yeah. <laughs>